to the left of the steering column. Uh, this is where you can, another way of opening up the charge port. Front trunk, we saw that. This is to open up. You push that and hold it to open up the power lift gate. Trash control off. Default will be on. If you need to spin tires for whatever reason, you can turn it off here. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges. I show that in the night video. Um, it goes, it adjusts a lot of different things besides the gauges. Electronic parking brake. Now this vehicle will engage the electronic parking brake when you put it in park. Uh, but if you need to, you know, take it on or off manually, you can do that here. And then there is a tilt telescoping powered steering column. The heads up display is actually pretty good. Uh, what's interesting about this one it's very similar to other Hyundai Kia uh, heads-up displays, but it has little lines. When you turn on the lane keep assist, the little lines move showing you the direction of the road. It's kind of neat, and it also shows you the relative position you are, the vehicle is in your lane. So as you move left to right in the lane, it'll show you that as well. Uh, pretty interesting. It also shows you the navigation, turn-by-turn uh, -turn directions, the speedometer, of course, but also if there's a vehicle in front of you, it gives you that information. It also shows you the last speed limit sign it passed. So yeah, and it, it's it's bright enough. Uh, you can see it pretty good. It's relatively sharp. It's not blurry. It's not distracting. So I think the heads-up display is fine. It's, it's really good. I'm sitting in the driver's seat, and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea what the potential legroom here is. And it's actually pretty good. Um, you can see there's lots of room here to the left, to the right of my knees. Um, this is a little bit too far back for me to drive. I'd probably pull it up a little bit more um, to in order to press the brake pedal all the way down, that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, if you're a little bit over six feet tall, you should have no problem uh, driving this vehicle comfortably. And there's lots of adjustments. There's even a... A, uh, th there's even a massage function here, heated and cooled seats and, and all that stuff. Steering wheel is also heated. It's a two-stage heated steering wheel. That's really nice. Uh, some heated steering wheels just get a little bit too hot, so the ability to have it on low or high uh, is nice. Uh, this steering wheel is great. It has, where it's soft, it's very soft, <laughs> but then it has this hard plastic. That's the only thing. It's like this hard plastic right in here. It's kind of like a glossy surface to it. If it was a different color, maybe it'd look better. It kind of blends in a little bit too much. A little bit of a contrast would be nice. Maybe, I don't know, but uh, but yeah, the soft part, surfaces are really nice, really comfortable. And, and the fact that it's like a flat top and flat bottom looks kind of neat. This Kia badge is also illuminated. Um, now it has the, the paddle shifters on the back and this is for the regen to adjust the different regen you can have three different automatic functions you can also have level one level two uh, level three and also the um, eye pedal which is basically the one pedal drive system which is you know a lot of people love that now the buttons here on the steering wheel here on the right side is the volume for the radio a little scroll wheel there change the audio track voice recognition uh, it also has to change through the tracks, you know, whatever you're playing, uh, whether it be radio stations, presets, or, um, you know, USB songs, or whatever you got going on there. That's to go up and down for the radio system. Uh, one button for answering and hanging up. So somebody calls you, you press that button to, hang, to answer, press it again to hang up. And then this is a button that you can customize. Here on the left side, um, now it has the cruise control, so one button to turn on the cruise control, which is nice. So you turn it on and set it all in one one press, uh, and then you can go uh, change the speeds there, up and down, press in on this button to pause and resume, set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you, turn on the lane keep assist system, uh, and then this little pages button and scroll wheel and OK button, uh, that corresponds with the screen, which I'll get that in a second. There is the windshield wiper controls for the front and rear, and it has the rain sensing system as well. Here on the left side is the turn signal, but it also has the headlight switch. So it's off, auto, parking lights, and headlights. And I do have a full night video on this vehicle as well. Uh, the automatic high beams actually work pretty good. A little spoiler there. Okay, so this screen is the gauges, and it's relatively minimized, uh, like a minimal type system. There's not a lot of customization here for a screen. Now, um, it does show the digital speedometer, last speed limit sign uh, that you passed, your range, uh, the actual battery percentage, and then this is the status of your regen. Uh, this is the odometer here, outside temperature, and the status of the vehicle. It's ready to drive. Parking brake, uh, brake is on right now because we're, we have the vehicle in park. Now, you can see right in the center, there's, this is showing the status of where the power is going from the system to the front and rear wheels. And it'll give you a little status bar as you're driving. 
most of the time, unless you're really flooring it, it's gonna be the rear wheels. Uh, if you really floor it, it's gonna engage the front wheels, um, but that's the way the system works. Now it does have the four wheel drive lock here. It also has the different drive modes. So as I hit the four wheel drive uh, or the drive modes, you can see it cycles through. My drive is basically one that you can customize. Snow mode, eco, normal, and sport. Now normal mode is actually pretty good. Uh, sport does give a, you know, it does give you more responsiveness and stuff like that. But if you really floor it in, in normal mode, it, it's still pretty good. I mean, it's not weak. Eco isn't even that weak, really, uh, for flooring it. As it is for normal driving, it's a little bit weaker than my preference anyway. But if I need extra range, it definitely does help. Uh, but using these buttons here, there's a pages button, a little scroll wheel right there. Uh, if I hit the pages buttons, I'm going to press it in one, two, three. One, two, three. You can see the little bars at the bottom showing you those are the different options here. The first one here, you can rest on that one. You can scroll up and down. This is more like vehicle information. Um, so it shows different trips, different uh, the status of, you know, like how much energy you're using, that kind of thing. Tire pressure. And it goes back to that. The next one is whatever if you have a route set on the navigation it'll show more information here right now it's just showing a compass uh, the next one will be your uh, driving aid system so this would be your status of your line keep assist or there's, if there's vehicles in front of you and then you can press and hold this button here uh, to enter in uh, basically a shortcut over here to the settings which is in the settings on the screen anyway but it's just like a quick way of uh, accessing the different uh, settings here turning on and off different features also under the settings you have screen layout and it has three different ones so you can see link to drive mode style b style c now if you go right here and i'll it's in style a go style b style c notice there's not a huge difference it's just a slight change in the little status bars there but it's not a huge difference. So I would like, I mean, it would be kind of cool if it had, uh, you know, more functionality to the screen, more customization, you know, like sort of like the Kia, uh, the Kia Sportage has a really nice screen. You can have like an image in the background and all that stuff. This one just seems kind of plain, I guess. Um, and now it's functional and everything, but you know, you'd think it would be, you know, a little bit, a little bit more customizable since it's just a screen, you know, they could just have, it's almost fixed almost, you know? So right in here, you notice there's a screen here. There's a screen here, but right here in the center is for the climate control. And it's a little bit obscured by the steering wheel. Uh, but if you hit this plus button, it pops it out on this side and you can do all the adjustments. And has a really cool imagery there. You can always make it go back down as well. Uh, there's also physical buttons down here for temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow and a passenger side temperature. So, it is kind of like you're just kind of filling a gap, but uh, it's not as functional as you would think because you do kind of have to lean over to see it. Uh, but it works fine because you can always, you can see that plus and you can hit that plus and it brings it over to the main screen. And that's really rapid. And almost everything you're going to control is down here anyway. So it's just kind of more of a static uh, controls there, but it is, can be, you know, functional as well. So this main touch screen here, um, it has these like physical buttons down here. Now they're haptic. When you press this button, it kind of like has a little sound to it. Uh, the only thing is I accidentally press these all the time when I'm trying to interact with the screen. But, uh, you know, it is, you just once, I'm sure once I got used to them, they'd be fine. Because you basically want to rest your hand while you're pressing the screen so you're not like, bouncing around or whatever, especially if you're driving and you want to hit a button, you reach over and then you're like, hit a bump and then you miss the button. So if you rest your hand there to press the button, it's better. But since there's buttons there, you accidentally hit those buttons instead. Okay, so there's the home screen here. And it's a split between right now the navigation map, whatever the radio is doing, and then you can quickly go to your EV setting. Now you can customize this if you want. Uh, you can also pull down from the top and then you can customize this little quick control, uh, different uh, passenger talk is really good for talking to the passengers because it projects your voice to the sound system so you don't have to holler at everybody. <laughs> Make it sound like you're mad. You can also set up different driver profiles here as well. Um, so the navigation map here, you could do searches here. Uh, pretty straightforward as far as that goes. And then the radio, you have different audio sources. 
it does have sounds of nature which is kind of neat and then your different um channels here it has album art as well the album art and stuff goes on the heads up display which is pretty cool too all right and the next one is this is very important you definitely have to use this regularly or at least set it up uh, when you first get the vehicle so the evs um the ev page i guess you could say our option uh this just shows you the status of the battery how far it is to the next charge port now this just shows like a regular you know slow charger so i wouldn't it's not like it's gonna separate fast chargers and all that stuff but if you hit this button it shows on a map uh, your actual range from where you are and how far you can go so you can see i'm right here so it's showing i can drive within that range giving the battery um, percentage that i have so it's pretty far it's almost like you know to virginia there and stuff like that all right let's go back here now there's different settings here as well you can have this information that information you can swipe here to the right get the more information here you can also condition the battery on your way if it's really cold you can condition the battery before you go to a tr fast charger and you get better charging speeds it shows your you know what you're using basically your charge settings as well your departure time AC charger settings charging limit and then your vehicle to load um, how much you're gonna use before it turns it off or how low your battery is you, there's your battery conditioning there's the utility mode I was talking about and then your smart regen which is your basically your automatic function over here um, you can go ahead and set that slower normal or faster uh, start the voice alert it's like charging started you can have that on there as well they like a voice outside of the vehicle um, so yeah setting that up your EV st stuff is very important when you f first get the vehicle and you can go in there and customize it the way you want uh, pair your phones here and access to that as well uh, your phone projection which would be Apple CarPlay Android Auto you can get a voice memo you just hit that button and you can speak in speak in the vehicle and just kind of you know have a a recorded voice memo you know it's really handy uh, seats this is information about the uh, second row seats the heated and cool part driver and passenger here you can also adjust the seats as well and then you can fold the seats from this position instead of the all the way in the back uh, you can get weather here And then there's your setup. You can also go to setup here. Navigation, EV. Um, the EV is basically with the screen we already saw. Heads up display adjustments. Uh, your screen layout, which we saw that over here. Um, your display settings, like brightness and stuff like that. Different user profiles. And then general settings will be about the software and stuff. The next one will be your valet mode. Vehicle diagnostics, maintenance, HD radio data, notifications here, and an online manual. Online manual, when you hit that, all it does is just take you to a uh, QR code. So it's not actually a manual. It's just a link to a manual. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting system. Um, it, it works well. This is new. You know, they kind of tweaked their system for 2024 for the Kia, Hyundai vehicles, Genesis, uh, that kind of thing. So most of them are going to be like this. And of course, you have the you know buttons down here to quickly go to stuff, so you don't have to go to every screen to get to certain things. Here's a volume knob, so you can adjust the volume there. Press in to mute. Press again to, or adjust it up or down uh, to initiate it again. Temperature, fan speed, where you want the air to blow. Temperature for the passenger. Four-way flashers are here. Down here is the connectivity to the system and also a charge port. So you have a USB. Uh, right here so this is I like I love this feature um, the and I saw this in the Santa Fe as well Hyundai Santa Fe where you can in Sonata <laughs> uh, so you can turn on this to where it's just a charge port or you can have it charge and connect with the system and you see it changes colors there because uh, sometimes when you plug in your device you don't want it to connect with the system it kind of forces you 
to start this process of connecting to the system and all that stuff, and you don't want to do that, you just want to charge the device, uh, you can do that. You separate it um, right there but with that button. This other one is just charging, and then there's a 12-volt power supply here. It's kind of hidden away, which looks good. You see that large pocket there at the bottom. You put a bag or whatever, box of tissues, whatever you want to put there. I love this ambient light. It looks really good at night. Got to check out my night video. Uh, so this is kind of like a roll top desk, kind of rubbery soft here. Opens up. And you have this space here, which you can also have cup holders that pop out. There's a small one. There's a large one. Rubberized floor in the bottom as well. Here's a fingerprint reader if you want to use your fingerprint to start the vehicle. And uh, it has like a, a white status light when you when the vehicle's off and then it'll um, turn blue when the vehicle's uh, when it's initiated or red I think it's red if you keep trying it it'll lock it out I think it's five or six times of trying it and not using your you know it'll basically lock you out you have to use the key all right so uh, auto hold feature will hold the vehicle keep it from rolling when you come to a complete stop you just hit the accelerator to continue this is a downhill descent for off-road mostly control uh, uh, slippery surfaces that kind of thing and you know, once you have the four-wheel drive lock system, uh, it will basically have the front and rear wheels drive together. And then, you know, this is another off-road type system that works great. Parking sensors are uh, initiated here. So you can turn them off if you want. Uh, and then I like, to have, like the way that it has a status light that they're on now, not an off light. <laughs> um, and then right here, this, this, this camera system is fantastic. So there's actually several different ways you can use the camera system. So um, let's back up a little bit because when you put the turn signal on, there is a blind spot camera that pops up. There's the right, there's the left. So as you're driving, you can see right in your blind spot. And we still have the digital speedometer there, just overlays it on the camera. This button, excellent. Press that button. It pops up here on the screen. Uh, right now it's showing the front view. We can have a top-down view, side views. You can see the front wheels there. As I turn the steering wheel, you can see the wheels moving. So we can see right where we are in relationship to, say, curbs and stuff. And then a front really wide view here. So there's kind of like the default view. And then the top-down uh, stitched together 360 camera system there. Uh, we can also press this button and get like a view around the vehicle. You see that there's a car back there. You can see where I'm at in relationship to other things. It's kind of neat. And uh, so you can also, if I put it in reverse, it's going to show this, the backup camera. And then you can see the active guidelines there. You can see guidelines there as well as I turn the steering wheel. Um, and as I move the vehicle, you can see shows where we are in relationship to other things in real time. Go forward. So yeah, really cool, uh, very handy camera system. So let's go back again. So yeah, so if you put it in reverse, it's gonna quickly go into, rever um, it's gonna go into the backup camera, even if you're in the front camera. Now the shifter is right here. We saw the we saw the uh, the power button, the, the, the power button basically start button, and it's on this stock right here. And it's I guess it can get you have to kind of get used to it for the average person. I guess it's a, it's kind of different, but I really like it. I like the fact that they moved the power button there because might as well use this stock since it's completely out of the way for as much as possible. You know, so it's really easy to just start the vehicle there. And then to turn it, put it in reverse, you just tilt this back. And then you can see the reverse, the backup parking sensors are initiated, cameras initiated, all that stuff. And it gives you visuals here on the screen if there's something close to your vehicle there and there. And also beeps if it's kind of close. Um, and then forward, like so, you just push it, put, try to tilt this forward. Now we have the camera going forward. Still have the parking sensors. And then if we want to put it in park, press right here on the end. And then it puts the vehicle in park and initiates the uh, parking brake, electronic parking brake, which is engages the rear wheels. So yeah, um, 
it's a little bit out of the way, but man, is it so easy to use. Like it took me 30 seconds to figure it out and how to use it. And uh, I really like this system. I'm glad they, they went with it. Okay, so I like this button here. Now the only thing I would say I add is um, Toyotas have the ability to, Toyotas and Lexus have the ability to have that turn on automatically when you get below five miles an hour. Uh, that would be nice to have so you don't have to push the button. Let's say you're, you wanna nail the parking spot. Um, you can just quickly press that button, but having it to just automatically turns on every time you, you're going forward um, and you go below five miles an hour, it's kind of handy to have that camera system pop up. And I wish that had that at least that option, you know. Some people like it, some people don't. So right here is a charge port here, or a charge wireless charger. So I put my phone there. Even with the case, it's able to recognize it and charge it. And there's a little status light showing that it's charging. And I hadn't had any problem with this charger. Uh, some wireless chargers, I put my phone there and it charges and then it starts blinking and then, and then you know, I get to my destination and my phone is dead because it wasn't charging the whole time. Uh, but this one has no problem. There's also a little place right here to put the key. You rest the key there. If the battery is, the actual battery inside the key fob is not working properly, um, you can uh, initiate the immob immobilizer system by placing the key there. Uh, get past it. Okay, so there we saw those cup holders back there. This is a soft touch, kind of rubbery soft armrest here. Uh, not really big enough to share with the passenger, but uh, it's it's okay. Now this opens up and you can see the rest of the little charger there. But right in here is like the tiniest little, uh, it's like the tiniest little uh, compartment. It has a little felt lining in it. But, you know, I can put my business cards in there. And uh, that's about it. Not a whole lot of stuff there. Um, now that huge drawer compartment is nice, but that's more for the rear passenger. So now you do have this huge compartment here, but it's you know, kind of down on the floor, not easy to reach, especially this is being the way. So that's kind of interesting. As long as you're aware of it, you can adapt to it. And you can see these buttons right here. So you can move this and move this. Comes in handy. So just, I can quickly move it here. Also, we saw how we can move it on the screen and just the, uh, the different seats here from the driver position. Pretty cool. We have a rear view mirror, an actual rear view mirror, auto dimming as well. We also have the rear view camera, which we can, uh, it's dimming right now because I have this shade over the light sensor, uh, but it is, is excellent. Really nice to have them. Once you have these rear view camera systems, it's, it's hard to go to a regular mirror. Uh, you can adjust the uh, brightness and tilt and all that stuff here as well. And then a home link garage door opener controls are here on the left side. Uh, we have some quick reading lights here. Here, we can turn on all the enter lights by pressing that button. These are soft touch buttons. Uh, you can have the interior lights not turn on when you open the door by pressing that. That's an off light. <laughs> and roadside assistance here as well. Uh, there's for the sunroof. That's for the rear shade. Get to that in a minute. Uh, the headliner is like a sim simulated suede material. Same thing with the visor. Visors are that material as well. It has a little clip there. Big mirror with a light that turns on. It also extends out as well. Very soft and plush feeling. But same thing on the other visor. Okay, so um, that rear... You see that rear glass back there. Let's go ahead and close the shade. We'll use that button and close the shade. So you can see it blocks 100% of the light. And the same thing here, but this is a manual shade. It blocks 100% of the light. Uh, let's go ahead and tilt it. Close it. Now we'll move it back. Press it again. All right, that's as far back as it goes. And we can close it like so. And this is also that suede material as well. So looking at the visibility, I have some of the seats down, some of the seats up, so you can see how they affect the visibility. There's lots of windows back there. There's a large, fairly large pillar in the back, but overall it's not really a big deal. I mean, looking over your shoulder, looking out the rear view mirror, especially rear view camera, um, haven't had any problems with blind spots or anything. It does have the camera system, the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert. Um, the rear view camera, the, I mean, there's just so much, so much technology to help you drive the vehicle. So, you know, 
even though there is a wide pillar back there, it hasn't really been an issue. I think it's overall actually pretty good. I've seen a lot worse than that. One of the things I noticed with this vehicle, as soon as I started driving it, was the stiffness in the steering. Uh, the steering is a little bit stiff and you can't adjust it in the system. Now it has a stiffer setting apparently for the sport mode or the sport setting on the uh, on my drive mode. Uh, but as it is, the, the, the lightest setting is kind of, you know, kind of stiff. It has like a sporty feel. So some people like that. In my case, I would prefer to have the option to lighten it up a little bit. But, you know, once you get used to it, it's not a big deal. It's not hard to turn or anything, but it just feels a little stiff. And this one has all cameras everywhere. You know, you have the surround view camera over here. Uh, you have the turn signal blind spot cameras left and right. And you also have the rear view camera, which is excellent. Uh, so all these cameras really help out when you need them. So this one here, especially if you have people in the back seats and stuff like that, uh, or cargo back there, it's going to get obscured. But the fact that you can, the, the regular mirror will get obscured. Uh, but the camera is located behind the vehicle and it gives you a clear view behind the vehicle. Now it's not in the perfect center position, but, but the way they have the wiper uh, swing down, I think that's the reason why. And you can kind of understand what the purpose, you know, why they put it where they did. Now you will have to uh, wipe it and clean it. You have to keep it clean. Same thing with the, all the cameras, uh, but the camera lenses. But um, the, the lens itself, a lot of them will have them in the glass and the windshield wiper will wipe past them and clean them for you. Uh, but since the wiper swings down, it just doesn't, you know, work with doing that. So in this case, it's, you know, it's in a position that's easy to reach and uh, it works okay. Now the acceleration is great, you know, uh, but there's a big difference between regular normal drive mode, eco mode, and sport mode. So when you hit the drive mode here, I'm glad that they have it right here. It's easy to get to uh, because sometimes you just, you know, you want to put it in sport mode. You want to accelerate fast and be able to get to it quickly and then switch back. Uh, it is great. And eco mode is kind of sluggish for me. I prefer to have at least the normal. And the normal is not really punchy because we have a heavy vehicle. So, you know, they don't really want you to drive it like a race car because it's really going to diminish your range because you're trying to accelerate a heavy vehicle all the time fast, which it can do. No problem in sport mode. Um, but, you know, of course, it's not really designed to be like whiplashing your family while you're driving around. So the normal mode is... Uh, I can understand why it's diminished as much as it is. Now I notice when I accelerate uh, in sport mode, when I just go like from a dead stop and, and just floor it, it'll use all the power for the whole all-wheel drive system all at once. And I do feel a little bit of torque steer in the front wheels when it does that. It's not a lot, it's, you know, it's not noticeable, it's not like a a big deal or anything i just want to mention it does have that so you want to make sure you hold the steering wheel uh tight when you're accelerating especially if you're going around curves or something like that if you're really accelerating hard then you know you will experience a little bit of torque steer or at least i did um and that's that's very rare because i don't know if you can see the the normal driving is mostly for the rear wheels and it only kind of kicks in the front wheels when it needs it which is great you know it's a good system to uh, you know, rear wheel drive is pushing the vehicle for some reason. It just feels more natural um, for me anyway. Now the cruise control system, I like the way that when you initiate it, you just press this one button, it turns the cruise control on and it sets it at the same time. You know, so there's not like multiple steps to trying to get the cruise control on. Now there is a button here that you do have to push separately to turn on the lane keeping assist system. And it does a pretty good job. It's a little bit intrusive you know, kind of struggles, it kind of fights with you, okay? So, basically, if you let go and mo and just kind of rest your hand, it kind of works better. Because if you're trying to kind of hold it like you're steering, it kind of fights with you. Now, it doesn't always see the lines on the road, which is very interesting, because the, the lines are, you know, sometimes clearly marked and are right there. 
uh, but yet it doesn't see the lines. Um, so that it kind of goes in and out as far as seeing, especially on curve, curves like right now, uh, see if it does it. It's not doing it. But um, so sometimes it does it, sometimes it, it doesn't. So the heads up display is pretty cool because you actually see the little lines curving and stuff like that. It's pretty neat uh, when you turn on the lane keep assist system. Another thing about it is it has the, the grip sensors. So just resting your hand on the steering wheel, it knows that you're holding the steering wheel and it doesn't bug you, you know. Um, but go ahead and resume here. But um, so yeah, so if you do want to just kind of gently rest your hand on the steering wheel and don't fight with the system, uh, you can do that. And it, and it does a pretty decent job for most of the time. I have it in sport mode, just gonna accelerate. So it doesn't take long to get up to speed. Let's put it in normal. All right. Once again, doesn't take much difference. I mean, it doesn't seem like there's much difference when you really floor it between normal and sport. Uh, you do notice a difference when you're just driving normally. And it uses the all-wheel drive system, and you do feel a little bit of torque steer, uh, you know, when you're not going completely straight, uh, because it engages the front wheels as, you know, maximum, basically. Now I have it in eco mode. So there's quite a bit less uh, acceleration. Also, it doesn't fully maximize the front wheels. It almost does, like three quarters of the way, but it's mostly the rear wheels. But it still has plenty of acceleration, even in eco mode when you floor it. The regen braking has several adjustments here. Now, in prior uh, Kia and uh, Hyundai vehicles, they had the panel shifters in which you can go to different levels. This one, including an automatic. This one has an automatic, uh, and the levels and everything, including iPedal, but the automatic has different levels. So you have a low, medium, you can, you can increase the automatic and get a larger percentage of regen out of the automatic function. Now, if you press and hold the right one, it goes into the levels. So it, is, it stays strict, it doesn't vary. Um, in the automatic, it kind of varies depending on what you want. But, um, but, it, but it depends on how you're driving, basically. But the, the strict level one, level two, and iPedal uh, stays in that level of regen. Uh, and then the iPedal max, basically without touching the brake, will come to a complete stop. So I hadn't touched the brake and I'm at a complete stop now. So that's the maximum regen. Now that's something you don't wanna use on the highway because every time you let off the pedal, uh, it's gonna just kind of slow you down a lot. So a lot of the inertia that you would normally maintain, uh, you're losing uh, by doing that. And the regen isn't like, you know, doing a lot of recharging. It does help, but you're better off maintaining your, your, your momentum than to lose it, especially when you're traveling, you know, on an open road or something. Uh, but if you're doing like stop and go traffic and stuff like that, it could be handy uh, in the city environment. Um, and also, the different levels of regen will be handy going down long hills. You know, sometimes you're you know, coming down the mountain or whatever, and there's like this long downgrade, and it's not very steep necessarily, but it's a long just downhill downgrade. And being able to use a little bit of that regen uh, at times to keep you from going too fast helps recharge the battery a whole lot because it's a long downward, uh, you're using you know, gravity to re basically recharge uh, the battery. So that's pretty neat. So yeah, the, the regen system is high, is very customizable to your liking. And some people just really like to, that, to just drive all the time with the, the iPedal type system. And, um, and so this has that capability. When it's plugged in, uh, it'll automatically pop up here on the screen how long it takes to finish the charge uh, and then your range currently 
and a just basically a percentage. Now, if you turn the vehicle on, so it says unplug the vehicle to start. So in other words, it's not going to let you drive away when it's plugged in. Uh, but we can go here. We can go here to the EV option. And it gives us some more information here. And it shows the charge rate. Now I have it set a little bit low. So it's like 36 amps. It can go up to 40 amps with my system. Uh, but I have it a little bit lower because it doesn't really need to have the fastest charging. Um, so in order to do that, we have these different settings here. And we have the departure time in which we can tell the vehicle to get everything ready. So like if you leave for work at say 7.30 in the morning, um, then you can set it up to for like 7.25 to go ahead and start the vehicle, get the temperature and all that stuff set up for you. And then the AC charger, see I have the charging current set to 90%. In the past it was like low, medium, high, and full. Now it's like 90%, 100%, and then 60%. So I have it set to 90, which is just a little bit below um, the, the full charge rate, which would be 40 amps. So it's right there around 36 amps right now. We can change it down to 60%. And, and then this brings it down to 5.6 kilowatt kilowatts of charging. 90 is 8.3 and then 100 is 9.2 kilowatts of charging. So it'll be quite fast, quite a bit faster uh, to charge at that rate. Uh, but in my system, I prefer to have it 90% in this particular case. Uh, so you can also set it up to where it says charging connector locking mode. Uh, you can have it to where it's always locked while charging or do not lock. So while charging, when it's finished charging, it'll just, it'll allow you to, you know, unlock it and take it out. Always locked, even when it's finished charging, it's going to stay locked in there. Uh, or you can have it just do not lock. Um, now, I, I prefer to have it while charging. Because you can unlock the vehicle, you can still, you know, take out the charger when you want to. Uh, but, you know, it allows, you, without the key, somebody else can just come along and take it out as easy. All right, and then the charging limit. So this will be the total charge, uh, limit on the total charge. So right now I have the DC charger, which is the fast charger, uh, has 80% maximum ac charge i have it at 90 percent maximum now you know like i could bring that down to 80 percent it depends on on your needs uh the ac charger so if you're charging every single day um 80 80 percent will probably be good for most people but if you need to go on a trip or something it's no problem go ahead and bump it up even to 100 percent as long as you're driving the vehicle immediately uh, after it's charged and then you're going on the trip it's not a big deal to go ahead and charge it to 100 percent. but just daily driving you're not it, unless you're going to be dr driving hundreds of miles uh, that day you want to just go ahead and limit that a little bit lower for health of the battery longevity of the battery uh, and then this would be the vehicle to load uh, based so basically the uh, the ac inverter system and you can set it to where it'll stop allowing you to use electricity at a certain point when the battery gets down to a certain point. So in this case, it's like 40, 49 miles, 20%. And uh, so that's pretty low. I mean, me personally, I'd bring it up, you know, to maybe like 30 or 40%, depending on how far away I am from home, that kind of thing. And then you have the separate, uh, the separate settings here. In the past, um, Kia had these together. But, um, so the battery conditioning, so this would be if you're on the way to go uh, fast charging, you can go ahead and turn this on so it'll warm up the battery or whatever, cool the battery, however, I think it's no normally warming no matter what, uh, to get to a certain temperature in order to charge, get the fastest charging you can out of the charging system. Uh, utility mode, if you're camping or something like that, you can use utility mode to keep the vehicle, uh, the climate control and everything on. Uh, for a long period of time without it turning off automatically. Smart regen. Uh, so this will be, I per, I mean, on the uh, the regen braking with the paddle shifters, um, I like the automatic mode, and you can adjust that here. So you have the slower, normal deceleration, or faster deceleration. 
Uh, and this is a little bit different than say, you know, the, the eye pedal and stuff like that. This is just like a, uh, a subtle, um, difference there in the automatic function. So I'm going to go to slower, slower, smooth, uh, deceleration. Charging started voice. So I have that turned off because literally it's just like a loud voice outside the vehicle and it's like charging has started and lets you, you know, like your whole neighborhood, uh, can hear a voice, you know, from coming from your car. So I turn that off. Um, I don't really see much need in it, unless you're, you know, unless you like it or whatever, you can do that. Uh, so there's some different settings there. Um, you can see that right here. Different views here. Electricity use. EV range history. Okay, so EV uh, economy. So I haven't started the vehicle yet. It said I hadn't driven it, so it's not given any range history there. All right. So let's go back and then back to the EV. Um, so yeah, that's, that's basically the, the different settings that you'll have and the different information you'll have when you're charging at home. Um, charging, of course, at a DC fast charger, you're going to have much higher uh, kilowatt rate and it's going to be, you know, a, a different experience, which we'll, I'll show you that soon. I've been charging to 90% at home before I leave. And let's go through the drive modes here. So Sport gives us an estimated range of 246. My drive is 254, which I'm not really sure how that's set up. Uh, let's go to Eco, 261, okay, for 90%. That's not bad. And then Normal is 254, which is not that much difference. And the Normal is much faster and much more responsive driving. And then the Sport... Uh, it gives a little bit less, but that's much more responsive. So I'm at a DC fast charger now. Definitely want to check it, make sure there's no issues here with the connection before you plug it in. Okay, so after resetting my password and going through the app and all that stuff, I was able to get it to start charging. Now I did do the battery reconditioning or the battery conditioning on the way here for about 20 minutes or so. So we'll see how fast it's able to charge now. So right now, it's charging pretty slow, 54 kilowatts. I've been at the same charger with another vehicle and it charged really fast. It was like 130, so I'm not sure why it's slow right now. Uh, I conditioned the battery and everything, so maybe it'll ramp up here in a second. Maybe the charger has to warm up or something like that. But it's showing 40 minutes uh, to get to 80%. That's a long time at the, this slow speed. So I've waited a little while and we're still at 54 kilo, kilowatts. So uh, it's like slow crawling. Uh, so at this point, I would probably move to a different charger if I needed the miles. I'm just demonstrating the vehicle. So I'm not gonna sit here all day, uh, another 26 minutes, cause I don't really need all these miles. But uh, for some reason, this particular charger is charging slow. But, uh, but you can find this vehicle should charge very fast, you know. Um, the last Hyundai Kia vehicle I brought here was, you know, 130, 140 kilowatts, no problem. So I'm not sure what's going on with it today, but 
just to give you an idea of how to charge it it's not that hard you just have to get through the app uh, depending on the charge station you make sure you have the app make sure you're logged in make sure you have a um, credit card on file or whatever and you just plug it in and hit start charge it takes if, like a minute or so and then it'll start charging so it's not really hard uh, but the this particular day I guess or this charge station is just not going as fast as it could